where we live in Nova Scotia, uh, it wasn't great for uh, testing out the track. So really we only got to try them out maybe two or three times. Um, you guys saw some of the videos that I did with uh, in the snow and that was pretty much all the snow we got. Every single video that I did um, with snow was pretty much the snow. So um, just so you know, like I bought this Argo last year and uh, my friend at the time bought the exact same Argo. You guys see them both in the videos that I've been doing. Um, and uh, it's funny that when you buy two Argos that are exactly the same and um, you know, you park them next to each other, you get the chance to compare what is the same. <laughs> so a lot of stuff was not the same. Um, so just to let you guys know out there that are thinking about buying a new Argo, um, a lot of times, you, you know, you're not, you're not getting the same thing as, as what somebody else might be getting. Maybe that has to do with COVID um, or maybe, uh, maybe that's just the way that Argo operates. You know, these things are kind of built funny and, and uh, they're funny rigs, so um, that could be it. But for the most part, it's been an awesome machine. A um, few things I would do different, you know, I ordered the cab and the windshield and the mud flaps and the tracks uh, when I ordered this thing. Um, the windshield's awesome, the cab's awesome, I love all that, the tracks are great, but uh, I probably wouldn't order the windshield wiper with it. It was about $700 and uh, it's kind of pathetic. I'll show you how it works. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen before, but I haven't seen any videos online showing this, but that's the cycle of the windshield wiper. It's half the windshield. So that's $700 for a wiper that I'm pretty sure you can buy on Amazon for a hundred bucks. If you can do that kind of stuff yourself, it'll save you some money for sure. So, um, Paco is, has been awesome for the for the Argo, so I don't know if you're familiar with Paco or not, but you may have noticed I have a, a Paco mount on the front here. Um, I've got two more Paco mounts in the back, and they allow you to just lock stuff in really quick. Um, I'll just give you an idea. So Paco crate, um, and then and then it's on there. So that crate is probably my favorite. It's um, you can just chuck anything in it. And away you go. Something else I did, um, well, actually my buddy and I both did these, uh, just a little dash. You know, these uh, these dashes don't really allow for storage of anything really. So, you know, even if you wanna chuck your gloves up here, um, this is just some, you know, thin sheet metal that uh, we bent and, and cut and riveted to the dash and then uh, took some, some of that uh, sticky foam floor that you would see in a boat and, and put in the bottom and away you go. And uh, did the floor, did these edges, you know, you're crawling in and out of this thing. It's, they're not easy to get in and out of, just helps if you're you know, throwing a knee on there or something like that. So built it up a little bit for the pack out mounts and screwed them right to it. And it allows me to snap stuff in here. So anything I've got that's pack out, I can just uh, grab a hold of. You know, if I want that down there, there you go, she's in there. So pretty cool system. It's all waterproof and stuff. So when the top's off, if you're going fishing or something, you can keep your clothes dry in a pack of, um, they don't come with the greatest uh, zipper holds. So you can see like that little zipper is all you've got to grab onto. And when it's cold out, it's, it's not that easy. So um, just to give you an idea, uh, bought a bunch of these. I think, I don't know, I think I paid eight bucks for 25 of them. And uh, they've really helped. Just that little lanyard on the zipper gives you something extra to grab onto, especially when you have gloves on. Again, you can get a pack of them on Amazon. They're, they're pretty cheap. I haven't put them on all the zippers yet, but I plan on it and um, definitely it helps out. So a few lights. I, I, probably change this because it does bounce around a bit, but uh, my buddy has a, a break, so he cut a piece of metal and I just painted it up black and took the rack mounts off and put it under there so I could mount these lights and uh, they work pretty good. The, you know, the headlights in these aren't the greatest. Um, you can put LEDs, uh, my buddy's got LEDs in his. I just haven't done that yet in the actual bulbs, but uh, you know, the other, 
A lot of guys too I see are, are putting something there, but it's, I don't know, not really worth it. By the time you put these other lights on, you're probably good enough for the amount of night driving you're gonna do. When I bought the tracks, I paid to have them assembled so that, uh, so that it was done, because it takes like eight hours to assemble these things. It's not very hard, it's just time consuming. My buddy did his on his own and, and it was an easy process, but when he started to do his, he asked me how many cleats I had on mine. And I only had half the amount that he had. I had 22 and he had 44. So they actually messed up at the dealership that I, that I went to. And it's not the first time they've messed up. These guys really, they don't sell many Argos, which is unfortunate. Um, but they, they put cleats on, the cleat kit was for a six by six. So it had half the amount of the cleats and, and the guy didn't even know, that's the crazy thing. So he just put them on and I thought it was normal. You know, I've never owned an Argo before. Um, we Again, it's something we realized, you park these things next to each other and you realize this stuff, <laughs> that uh, that was done wrong. The other thing, uh, the cabs were sort of, um, done differently. So all these little snaps and, and hooks and stuff on mine are all pretty tight. On my buddies, they're not so tight. So there's no, you know, there's no sp specific spot that, that you're supposed to screw these. The guy at the shop, I think he just makes his best guess, I, I suppose. But either way, um, it's just part of owning one of these. They're, they're not a perfect, perfectly built machine. It's just the way that it goes. Uh, dipstick was an issue. They sent me two, so I have an extra one here, but this hole right here that you can see, um, on the one that came with it new, it didn't, apparently that hole didn't have a, um, a bevel in it to prevent um, all of the transmission fluid from splashing out as you drove. So that was a real issue. It stank really bad as you were driving it and uh, lost a lot of transmission oil when we when I first got this thing, um, just because it was simply coming out of this hole. So they, the dealership was decent enough. They, they came up with their own solution until Argo sent these things out. I don't know if you've ever taken the back seats out of one of these, but basically there's just little plastic dowels screwed to a wooden uh, bottom. Those seats are just plywood wrapped in foam and, and uh, material. Nothing fancy, which that's fine, but the, the way that you get them out, typically those plastic little dowels that have tiny wood screws in them snap and um, basically you gotta figure out another way to stick them to it. So Velcro seems to work, but if you're taking them in and out all the time, you know, and, and putting this thing in, you're, it's, it's more annoying than anything. This is the bag that holds your cab and uh, maybe it doesn't look that big, but it actually holds the entire cab except for um, all of the, the pipes, like the, um, the frame pieces. Those, I, I basically leave them together. Um, each window comes out separately and, uh, and rolls up separately, which is uh, pretty easy to do. You're getting scratched up a little bit, but for the most part, we, uh, we don't really hold back. We'll drive through just about anything with these and these cabs have hold, held up really well. Um, you know, it'd be nice to have a hard cab, but you're trading uh, versatility there. So definitely enjoy the fact that I can take this thing off and use it in the, uh, in the summer as a basically a glorified fishing boat. So we'll speed this up and piece of plastic window is out um, and you can drive it like this we've used it like this a few times which is kind of nice um, like on a hot sunny day if you want some shade but um, for the most part I don't like it there because if you're doing any fishing um, you're not gonna want that in the way so Just like that, we're down to the, the frame and that's all pretty easy too. It's all, you know, there's no tools required for any of this. It's all just snaps and um, there's some pins that hold in those cross member bars. And... That's 
that's how easy it is just to take the soft cab off. The windshield obviously is still up. I'll show you that and I, I won't time lapse it, but these are basically what hold on the, um, the cross member bars. These guys here. So down at each, on each end here, you can see it's just with a little butterfly screw, thumb screw, thumb screw if you're from Newfoundland. Um, it's pretty simple. Everything's pretty simple. The other thing is these, these cross members you saw me take off, there's four of them. So two in the front and two in the back. They're all identical. You don't really have to worry um, next year, you know, when you're putting it back on, where do these all go? They're all the same. So that does make it simple. These have been a, a bit of a pain in the ass. These, these uh, pins, you, you got to shove them up through and they're just, it's not the best system. I'm not going to lie, but it works. And once you get it on there for the winter, you're not taking it off. You... All right, I'll show you how to put the windshield down. My plan is to, to take this off for the for the summer, but it's, it's pretty simple. Two pins, one on this side, you kind of just let that pipe hang. Um, there's one on this side and then you fold it down. There's nothing, um, there's nothing that's going to hold it up um, because I have that pack out mount on there. It's not actually going to work because of the windshield wiper. But you can see here, these bars basically lock into that and your windshield just floats there. Um, just free floats with these bars holding it up. I have a different plan. Um, I don't want my windshield on at all this summer. So there's a basically a, a, just a rod in here. I'm going to knock that out, pop the windshield off. And I'm looking forward to... Uh some warmer weather. Let me know what you think. Um, like, comment, share, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks.